Well, hello, and welcome to chapter number 42 of the official online GMRS encyclopedia. The only online GMRS encyclopedia approved by the internet. In this short chapter, I will demonstrate how to prevent the most common source of rage and confuculation that many new GMRS and ham radio operators often face. I myself have seen this occur many times in the online forums and it usually plays out something like this. An excited new GMRS user invests many of their hard-earned dollars in two new GMRS radios, but when testing the two radios, they cannot get the two radios to talk to each other. Or when trying to use the two radios to test and use a GMRS repeater, the same thing occurs. They can hit the repeater, they can hear the repeater squelch tail, that's the little blip of static that you hear after you key up and you connect to a repeater, but they cannot hear themselves when they talk to the repeater on one radio, they cannot hear themselves on their other new radio, either directly talking one radio to the other or through said repeater. Now for all of you experts watching, please step away from the keyboard because this is not an issue with tones or codes. The radios are both on the same channel or frequency. And in most cases, both of the radios are actually turned on. But no matter what, the highly confuckled new GMRS radio user cannot get the two radios to talk to each other. And it is at this point when many new GMRS users will turn to the online forums for help. And their pleas for help usually look and sound something like this. I just bought two new radios and they are junk. I can't get them to talk to each other. When I transmit on one radio, I can't hear it on the other radio. It should work. Both of these radios should work. They're junk. I'm sending them back. These radios suck. And I must admit, when I was a new, wet GMRS user, I too made this very same mistake myself. So I can speak from the heart when I tell you I understand how much confuculation this can create. Confuculation that, if allowed to fester, can turn into rage. But do not despair because I am here to explain it in a way that even you can understand what's going on and how to fix it. And this is the actual problem. The radios are too close to each other. And because the radios are so close physically within such proximity of one another, they are suffering from a phenomenon known as descents. Descents. Or, as some may call it, front end overload. Now there is a lot of technical jargon that is often used to explain this phenomenon, but long-time viewers know that on this channel, the only channel approved to talk about GMRS by the internet, on this channel we do not allow and I do not do ham-splaining. So allow me to explain it in a way that we can all relate to. Imagine for a moment in your mind's eye that you are laying on the couch and trying to watch your favorite tasteful hamster porn video while your mom is vacuuming. The loud noise of the vacuum overwhelms your noise holes so that you cannot hear the screams of muffled passion coming from the hamster on your video. And that is exactly what is happening when these two radios are too close to each other. This one is you on your couch watching hamster porn, and this one is your mama. And when you press the push to talk button on one radio, when the other radio is so close, it's too much for its fragile little ears and it can't hear anything. So how do you fix this phenomenon and make the radios work or confirm that your radios are working as expected? It is actually very simple. Just move the two radios farther apart, 40 or 50 feet should do, and try it again. 